Welcome to the Holidays to Switzerland Travel Podcast. Your host is the founder of Holidays to Switzerland.com and the Switzerland Travel Planning Facebook group, Carolyn Schonefinger. On this podcast, Carolyn will be joined by a variety of guests who share their knowledge and love of the country to help you plan your dream trip to Switzerland. This is episode 14 of the Holidays to Switzerland Travel Podcast. In today's episode, I'm joined by Tracy Collins, who runs the travel blogs Tracy's Travels in Time and UK Travel Planning. Tracy is originally from the UK and has visited Switzerland many times, including a stint living and working there. And she's going to share some of her favourite Swiss experiences with us today. Hi, Tracy. Hi, how are you doing, Carolyn? Nice to join you today. Lovely to have you here. First, can you start by telling us a bit about your background and how you became a, a world traveller? Ah, okay. Well, um, I was born in the UK, as you mentioned. Um, lived there until I was 13, and then we emigrated to South Africa. Um, so I was in South Africa for about eight years, did my uh, university there. Um, but one of my friends from school had gone to Switzerland, actually, to Fafikon, and she worked as a nanny for a year. Um, she took a year before coming back to university, um, and she showed me all the photographs and told me about her family, and I was, I really want to do that. Um, so I finished uni, and basically for about six years, that's what I did. I traveled around the world, and I worked as a, an au pair to start with, and then as a nanny. Um, so worked for a lot of lovely, lovely families that I'm still in touch with, um, which included stints working in Switzerland. Um, I've worked all over the world, Canada, uh, Botswana. Um, so, yeah, just spent a lot of time traveling before then. I, I actually qualified as a teacher in my late 20s, um, spent another 20 years living back in the UK, uh, found it a bit too, bit too chilly in the winter. Um, so... We decided that we would like to travel again. So um, me and my husband and my daughter, we moved over to Australia three and a half years ago. So we've been Lovely. here. Today. Yeah. Excellent. Now, I believe that you also have a bit of a family connection with Switzerland. Your mum lives there or previously lived there. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, uh, my mum lived there for, I think, about 10 or 12 years. They only, actually, she just moved back to the UK with her husband, um, just as we left to move to Australia, unfortunately. Um, so, yeah, she she got married um, and um, her husband lives in Switzerland. He, he lived in Switzerland for, I think, about 30 years. I worked for a Swiss company just outside Zurich. Um, so, yes, yeah, so my mum was over there for, for about 12 years. So. Uh, we used to go over at least two, three times a year, a uh, quick trip down to Luton Airport or or actually once I did it by train, I decided that I was getting a bit lazy on doing solo travel. So I decided I would do it by train and I did it in a day from our house to my mum's place in, in Fafikant in Switzerland. Wow, I'm super jealous popping over to Switzerland two or three times a year. <laughs> you know what it's like travelling from Australia. It's It's a big effort. Yeah, absolutely. I do. I do miss that. I do feel that, especially at the moment, obviously, where we can't go anywhere. But um, yeah, it was very easy when I lived in the UK just to go anywhere. Um, and often because I was a teacher in the UK, you could guarantee that in the third week in July, when the schools broke up, the weather would go awful in the UK, we'd end up with rain. So I would always try to put a mum and say, I'm popping over, I'm coming over. So it's only, it was only an hour, an hour and a half flight. So very quick and easy. Um, so yes, yeah, so quite often I would go over and they had a pool. So it was, it was always just lovely to go and relax. So quite often I would just go really and just chill out. Um, obviously did a lot of travel around Switzerland over the years, but it was always a very relaxing break. And I, and I love Switzerland in the winter um as well because I absolutely adore snow uh so it's just stunning there just stunning when it the snows oh yeah absolutely beautiful beautiful yeah, definitely mm. can you can you tell us a bit more about um uh, your nanny job in in Basel uh how, how did that come about and and what what did that involve Okay, well, I actually, my first job that I actually did um, was, I actually worked, uh, I was on Lake Geneva, but on the, the French side of Lake okay. Geneva. So um, that was in the late 80s when I finished university, um, I moved back to the UK, um, 
and basically applied for jobs in France. I was offered one down in Nice, and then I was offered the one on Lake Geneva, and I was like, nope, mountains, I'm going there. Um, so, yes, yeah, so I was there for uh, about 18 months. Uh, so, again, sort of visited Switzerland quite a lot. Um, and then a couple of years after that, uh, I was working in London as a temporary um, nanny, and the job came up in Baal. Uh, with working for a, um, a Finnish French family. So the mom's a nurse from France and the dad's a doctor from Finland. Um, so I went and worked for them for three months over the summer. I think it was about 1992, if I remember rightly. It's a long time ago. Um, I worked for them, still in contact with them today. Uh, oh, little, yeah, little village called Bubendorf, just outside Ball. Um, they didn't have a television. Um, so it was, it was very much it, just a lovely, lovely family, very creative family. Um, I used to have a Sunday off. So every Sunday I would go all sorts, all over the place, all over. I, I would even actually go to Zurich just to go and buy the Sunday Times newspaper. So I'd literally <laughs> go, <laughs> go to ball, jump on the train, go to Zurich, get off the train, go and get the Sunday Times newspaper, get back on the train, come home and then spend the rest of the day reading that. Uh, so it's a newspaper. Yeah, well, no, I had, I had a, I had a pass. You have to have a train pass. Um, so yeah, I had a sure. train pass. Um, so actually, it was it was relatively cheap. Yeah, I would always advise somebody to get a train pass. Um, yeah, so that made it a lot easier. Um, and the family that I worked for, I mean, they still live there. In fact, I mean, the, both the children are grown up now. One's a um, should be she was a vet, and now she's a um, professor lecturer. Um, and the son still lives in Switzerland. Um, but yeah, they're. Um, and with a, they spoke lots of languages, so uh, Finnish, French, German, English. So the daughter, Lauren, could go through, would would start a sentence in one language and then end it in a different language. Wow. So, yeah. That was um, going to be my next question for yeah. you. Did, do you speak German or French or Italian or, or would, could you get by okay with English? Um, I speak fluent French. Um, I did speak fluent French, um, pretty bilingual. Uh, because when I lived in France, the family I worked for um, were quite strict uh, and I really appreciated it. It felt quite hard at the time because Jack was very much, uh, you need to learn to speak proper French because you're going to be talking to my daughters and I don't want them to learn, you know, some incorrect grammar and pronunciation. So if I made a mistake, Jack would correct me. Um, and so within six months of living in France, I was completely fluent. I would think in French. Um, so I, I do try to go back to France when I can just to practice it. Um, it's very rusty. It's 20 odd years later. Um, I think a few months in Switzerland and in France, I would get back into it. Um, I don't speak much uh, Swiss German. Grützi, that's about it. Um, <laughs> it's it's a quite a difficult language. Um, and I'm very much more in favor. I prefer the Romance languages. That sounds a bit, but it's just easier on the ear. Um, mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, uh, the, the only, I, I think you can get by in English. I've got by, the only one time I remember meeting another nanny who did not speak any English. Um, and she was Swiss German, I think, if I remember right. So we could only communicate in French. Uh, but that's, very, and this was a long time ago. So it's very rare, whereas most people, obviously, um, my mom's, uh, knows a little bit of Swiss German, but she's certainly not fluent and she got by. Um, so, yes, I think it's quite a tricky, it's a tricky language because it's not, it's not really German. No, that's right. Yeah. My, my husband's is fluent in German. And yeah, he, he, yeah. when we visit his aunt in Bern, he, you know, he struggles. She has to uh, speak, you know, proper German because yeah. some of the, the dialect is, yeah, quite interesting. <laughs> oh, yes, absolutely. And I think it changes from Canton to Canton as well. So different yeah. accent. Um, a language of its own. Now, when you um, are, you, you pronounced it Baal because that that's the French pronunciation. Um, I think most English speakers probably pronounce it Basel. Yeah, uh, it's it's interesting because my mother would always argue with me, would say it's Basel. But when I worked there, I worked for a French speaking family, um, and also I lived in the opposite the French speaking part of Switzerland. So I my I would call it Baal. Um, and that felt more natural for me to say ball because um, that's how it was talked about. Uh, but sure. yes, Basel, ball. But um, yeah, ball is a French way to say it. But Basel, yes, is what you would you would hear in Switzerland more. Yeah. 
Um, it's the same with Malouz because I would say Malouz, but they all say Malouz. I can't even say it, but because of the way that I heard it uh, when I was when I lived there. Um, yes, but yeah, yeah, good. So, what is what are some of the highlights of Basel or Baal or the the top things that visitors should see when they go there? It's probably um, a a less sort of visited country to a degree for a lot of foreign travellers. I mean, most of them head to Zurich, Bern, Geneva, um, yeah. Lutzen. So, yeah, Basel is probably less visited, I, I would think. To be honest, it's actually, uh, since I left Switzerland, I actually haven't been back, would you believe it, to, to Baal at all. Um, so I've been back to Bern and obviously Zurich and Geneva and uh, but not back to Basel, but I, I remember very much Basel. The old town's very nice. There's a river. There's a lot of bridges over um, the the city. And I used to take the children to the zoo. So that's probably more in my mind is taking the children to the zoo. I actually did go a few years ago when I took, I actually took my uh, niece for her 21st birthday. We traveled through Italy and then up to Switzerland. And then across to, we flew back from um, Malouz, Basel Malouz Airport. Um, so that was that was the last time really in I don't know I guess nearly thirty years that I've actually been back. Um, now I'm in contact with the family that I worked for, and they're like, "You need to come and stay. You need to go and visit again." And I dare tell them I was I was so often I was in Zurich. Yeah. Um, it was actually she found me on LinkedIn, which was amazing. Um, yeah. So yeah. So it was lovely to to have that contact. So um, yeah, uh, I, there's so many there's so many places to visit in Switzerland. It's it's always so hard to decide where to go, um, and uh, we would obviously base ourselves in Zurich when I went to a mom. And obviously, sometimes I would just go and just just relax. Um, but my husband would fly over quite often, so uh, we did a few trips down to actually through down to Italy on the train. We've flown into Geneva and then taken the train over to Zurich. Um, Lucerne. I'm sure you're going to ask me where my favourite place is in Switzerland. <laughs> I always go to Lucerne. Um, I just love Lucerne. Um, there's a, a little cafe that my mum and I always go to, and we always have the same food <laughs> every time we go. We have a lovely quiche and salad and a little little orange juice, um, and of course the cakes are amazing. So um, that's kind of a tradition when I used to go. My mum and I would get the Voralpen Express. From Fafikan to uh, Lucerne, and then have yeah, have a walk around, and then have lunch for the day. Um, well, yeah, I must well, I must get the name of that cafe from you before we finish, and I'm sh- I'm sure a lot of people will be like to, like to check that out. Uh, you mentioned before mountains, and that was one of the reasons why you took the job on on Lake Geneva. So you must have. Um, taken plenty of mountain excursions over, over your the number of visits you've had to, to Switzerland. Which ones would be your favourites? Uh, Pilates, without a doubt, Pilates. I absolutely love going there because, again, you go to Lucerne, but it's such a lovely day out, especially if you take the, the golden round trip. So it's the you, you take the boat. So you literally arrive in Lucerne. If you, don't, if you literally want to go straight up the mountain, you can walk out, buy your tickets, get a boat get the boat straight across the to um Alpenachstad on the opposite side kind of of the lake you get off there then you go on to the um cog railway which i think is the steepest in the world um up to the top the views are absolutely stunning um then you've got some gorgeous walks at the top um and then you can come down you come down in a, a cable car and then a gondola back down to i'm sure i remember the name of the place now um Oh, I can't remember. You, you, a Crean, that's it, Crean, and then you get the bus back to um, uh, Lucerne. So it's a whole day out. If it's a lovely day, what the worst possible thing is that you get up there and a cloud has landed on top of the mountain because you don't see very much. So try to check the weather before you go. Um, another one that's really good is Riggy mm-hmm. because there again you can see three lakes from there, so you get beautiful views of all the mountains. Um, I've done. I'm trying to think. I've mainly done those in the summer. I think I don't think I've being up in the winter i haven't actually been to the top of europe which is definitely on my kind of bucket list um to do um because obviously when i was working as a nanny i wasn't i uh, didn't have a huge amount of money and and it's quite expensive to do a lot of those trips so um i've done pilates twice i, was, I did that uh, i think both times with my husband actually uh, oh no what i think once with my mom and my stepdad and then uh, my husband came the following year and we just went um and i absolutely loved that um 
yeah, just just my favourite thing to do. I, on my ideal day, it would be just to go to Lucerne, take the trip up a lot, just come back down, stay in Lucerne, have you know, to have lunch in my cafe, have lunch with my mom. Yeah, uh, yeah, just enjoy the lake and the scenery, um, and take a boat boat trip on the lake. I remember doing that what thirty years ago, and and the um, the guide telling us where all the famous people lived on the side of the lake and I remember Audrey Hepburn I just remember that sticking in my mind and there was a lot and that my favorite house in the entire world is on, on Lake Lucerne it probably costs millions I'm sure it does um but I have photographs of it and it, it's one of those if I ever won the lottery that I'd be trying to buy <laughs> you'd be knocking on their door <laughs> yeah Pilates in the background the lake in the front Lucerne oh, you couldn't ask for anything better it's beautiful that's what dreams are made of. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So Lucerne is your favourite place. Um, what about some others? Are, are there some, you know, or lesser known or hidden gems that you visited that you just absolutely fell in love with and you'd love to go back to? Um, I did quite like it because my parents were in Fafikon, uh, which is outside Zurich. So we used to do quite a lot of just little trips from there. So one place we, we used to go to is Ein Seedling, which is um, up from where they lived up the mountain so it's quite a windy road so if you get car sick probably not a good idea but um it it was actually a place of pilgrimage i think in europe for roman catholics there's a um benedictine abbey there um and i I don't know if that's still kind of open but it's it's just such a beautiful setting there's a lot of sports there so in the winter there's the snow skiing and then the summer there's swimming at the lake up there um, so it's quite a popular place. But again, there's a lovely, we just used to drive up, have a walk around, a um, cup of coffee and a cake. Uh, and I know my daughter went up because she used to go over quite a lot to do skiing and I used to take her up there just to when she was learning to ski. Um, so that's a really nice place to go. Um, Rappersville as well is lovely. Yeah, I love, um, love Rappersville. Yeah, yeah, and that's really close to obviously where they lived. So uh, we used to get the train or walk over. Um and just again, I think we do a lot of. I just think we did a lot of cafes and a lot of coffee and a lot of cakes. <laughs> you can't visit Switzerland without trying all the cakes. <laughs> I know. <laughs> um, and then if you go to Rap as well, as well, it's really good because you can actually get the boat to Zurich, and you can get lunch on the boat, and that's a really good trip. You could do that as a round trip if you were there as well. So we did that quite often. Um, yeah, the Rain Falls we went to. I'm trying to think. Yeah, just lots of. Uh, and obviously, just in Zurich, which is which is hardly a, a, a hidden hidden gem, but it's it's lovely to walk around in Zurich. It's a really lovely city to visit. And obviously, I used to go shopping with my mum. Should go and get a bit of grocery shopping there. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. yeah, just kind of normal, regular stuff. I suppose it was kind of sometimes part holiday and part, you know, just normal life. I guess. Yeah. So you yeah. probably got really more of the local experience to a degree than than just the tourist experience. Yeah, I would think. Oh, yeah, I think so, and I think so probably as well when I was living there. So when I lived, I lived in in Ball in sort of the early nineties. But then I also got a job. I was back in London, and I was interviewed by um, uh, she was a dentist actually, a Swiss dentist. Uh, but she was living in London, and she was meeting her parents over in Cornwall, Montana, the ski resort for the part of the winter season so she wanted someone to come over to look after the girls so I uh, flew back over with them um and you know shopping in Chanel was lovely <laughs> I really got spoiled, I, I really got spoiled. The, the family home was on a lake it had a swimming pool in the basement it had a lift it three stories it was it was it was rather it was just stunning absolutely stunning um and actually she she I don't know She's the godmother of um, Bertrand Picard, the um, balloonist. Mm-hmm. I don't know if I should say that. Yeah, balloonist. So he's he's the, the, the balloonist, the uh, adventurer. So he's very, very famous in Switzerland. Um, he did the first nonstop balloon flight around the globe a few years ago. And then he did the solar impl- in, impulse flying around the world. Um, so I actually met him uh, while I was working for her. So we traveled around a bit, but she went to visit because um, – so she's godmother for the to the to the child, so or she was a baby then. Um, so we went and stayed at, at their house. So I didn't quite, I didn't know who he was. I didn't have a clue who he was. It was only afterwards I was like, okay, he's actually very famous. In fact, his <laughs> grandfather, his grandfather is Jean Luc Picard in is it Star Trek, Star Wars, Star Trek, Star Trek is named after him, and his grandfather's also um, was the um, 
the inspiration between the, for the Professor Calculus and the Tintin books. So it, it, incredible, amazing family and a, a lovely, lovely guy. It's so lovely. Um, was really interested in me and what I was doing and so a real people person. Um, but it's amazing. You don't, you meet people and then you don't think anything of it. And then you find out afterwards, actually, all these people are really quite famous. <laughs> <laughs> probably probably best that you didn't know until afterwards yeah, probably actually probably because I probably would have been a bit starstruck whereas I didn't have a clue so. <laughs> that's right <laughs> so what are some of the well I guess that's one but one of some of your most memorable experiences from visiting Switzerland oh I just think the train journeys I just love taking train trips um so we I, I could live on a train, seriously. I could travel, and that's what we want to do. We want to kind of travel the world by train. I, I don't particularly like flying. So, um, and Switzerland is is really, if you enjoy train journeys, it's absolutely the place to go um, because the trains run on time. Um, they're, you know, they're just they're very clean. Um, and you just have some stunning scenery. Sometimes you don't know which way to look because <laughs> it's so beautiful. Um so yes, taken. I, I, we just had some wonderful train trips. I just I remember we left my daughter with my mum over Easter. It was quite a long time ago, and so she was quite young. And we just went through Italy and then ended up in Venice. You know, just just lovely, just hopping on and off trains and and um, exploring. Um, and also, I just love being there. I was saying that I love the winter when when it snows over there because that's just so magical. And that family that I worked for. Um, the second time when I went over just for that short, short visit, we went, I was there over Christmas. Um, um, they, we, we went to this restaurant uh, and actually I did find it the other day. I was looking at it and it basically um, had like a glass partition and there was um, like donkeys and, and straw. And it was, you know, it was absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing. Proper Swiss chalet, but with the animals kind of on this glass partition on the other side. It was just, it was absolutely magical. It was snowing, beautiful views. And then, um, yeah, this gorgeous restaurant was absolutely fantastic food. Um, yeah, so I was really spoiled. I have to say that's one thing when you when you do work as a nanny for, for people like that, you, you do you get spoiled. You get you get to really experience the best the best of it. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Now we've mentioned cakes a few times, um, but there are some other typically Swiss foods particularly cheese and chocolate I guess oh, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, how, how how do you enjoy the, them and and did you really embrace the old fondue and raclette absolutely love French food uh, French food Swiss food Swiss French food I should say I guess but because when I lived in in the French uh, in France opposite Switzerland um Joelle who I worked for was a fantastic cook and so she introduced me to a lot of that kind of raclette fondue all those kind of dishes um, but when I then I lived in Baal and I was working for Yuka, who was the doctor I worked for, he, he loved cooking as well. So he was the first one that introduced me to um, uh, Zurich Schnitzel with um, mm-hmm. um, Rusty. And I, 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 you know, I can't make it very well. I try. My mum's very good at doing it. Um, and that's my favorite, favorite dish. So if I get a chance when I go back, I, I always have Zurich Schnitzel. Um, with the humusa, the vegetables as well. Um, and my favorite restaurant for that is there's a, as you drive from Fafikon over to, um, Rappersville, there's a, on that bridge, as you drive over, there's a, a, a restaurant there and they do the best. Um, there's also obviously some very good restaurants in Zurich as well. So the Zurich House Keller, where they do the meat on a, on a sword, um, mm-hmm. which is very nice. Um, Raclette is, I've had raclette more actually when I lived in France, bizarrely, than, I, than I've ever had when I've been in Switzerland. Um, but it's such a social social meal because it's so fun. Uh, melting the cheese, putting on the potatoes, having pickles and ham or whatever else that you've got. Um, so I love potatoes. So I'm just in heaven with the, the kind of the Swiss German food because it's very creamy, very, very dairy, a lot of cheese. Mm. Um, my mum lived very close to the uh, Lint uh, factory shop. So that was always, oh yes, I used to come back with kilos of chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> that that would that would kill me living that close. <laughs> I, I have lots of videos of of the shop and all the chocolate and lots of photographs um, because that was always a tradition. You always have to go there and stock up. Um, so I hate paying the proper fr- the proper prices now. I'm like oh, so expensive uh, when you could go there, and also because the shop would 
often they'd have um, new um, new different types of chocolates before they were out in England or out anywhere else. So you could try lots of different things. So that was always good fun as well. Yeah, so I do enjoy that. Yeah, wonderful. And, of course, uh, Swiss hot chocolate um, is great for when you're up in the mountains. Oh, yeah. yeah. Cold, oh, and cold, also winter, like, cold winter day. Oh, when you go up and it's like because we often would just drive up to the um, one of the ski resorts and um, just having a I, I love having a bowl of soup, you know, a really hot steaming hearty bowl of soup when you can sit outside as well because you're all wrapped up. But it's a sunny day and it's all snowy and you can obviously you can get sunburnt as well. But having a nice bowl of soup and just sitting and enjoying the scenery. Again, I've got some lovely photographs of us doing that as well. Um, yeah, so my husband would have the chocolate, hot chocolate. I probably would have the bowl of soup. <laughs> Okay, so there's obviously plenty of wonderful things that you've that you've been able to enjoy in Switzerland on all, on all your visits there, and I'm I'm sure there's plenty more that you plan to do next time you you go back. But if you were advising a first time visitor to Switzerland, what is one thing that you think everyone needs to do when they go to Switzerland? Uh, take a train trip. Definitely take a train trip. And uh, there's so many beautiful ones. I, I really like the from Geneva to Zurich is lovely because you go along um, Lake Geneva. I, I, I absolutely adore Lake Geneva. I think that's probably my heart is still a bit there because um, that was the first place I really lived. And um, I absolutely adore it. I, there was nothing better, I have to say, I used to wake up in the morning and, and uh, we had it. Even in where we lived, we had it more of like a traditional uh, Swiss kind of chalet type house. But I would open the shutters and the view was straight over to um, uh, Lo- uh, Lausanne and the lake. And, you know, I still I still dream of that now when it's 30, what, 32, 33 years ago since I was there. But just opening the shutters and there was a beautiful blue sky, snow, and then the view across the lake was absolutely stunning. So if you want that, I would say take a train trip, definitely. Do go up a mountain, <laughs> definitely take one of the cog railways, um, and go up one of the mountains it is pricey um so get it get the train pass because that will help um but you, I, I don't think you should go without doing those things so the train thing in the mountain definitely and go to lucerne <laughs> yeah <laughs> <That's> really, <laughs> telling, tell them pricey sent you <laughs> yeah yeah those would be kind of the three things that, and you could do all of those at once i mean my ideal trip i'd fly into geneva i think and then i'd get the train over to zurich Spend a bit of time there. And also from Zurich, you can do loads of day trips from that from there. Um, but that's the area that I'm most familiar with. So that's probably what I'd do. And lots of lots of cake, lots of um, coffees and, and lots of nice Swiss food. And, and maybe walk up the mountain. It would probably be good for the exercise because the amount of <laughs> chocolate. The amount of <laughs> Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Lots of walks. Um yeah, and uh, yeah, just just uh, Switzerland is lovely. Just yeah, bear in mind that it can be expensive. So look at things like the train passes, things that you can do to just save yourself a bit of money, um, because yeah, it, it, it is not the cheapest um, country in Europe to visit. So you need to kind of just be aware of how you can, um, you know. And I know that's something that you talk about on on your on your holidays to Switzerland um, website a lot as well about that about the the train passes and then definitely. Um, definitely worth investing in because um, and I know um, I've never driven in Switzerland if you believe it um, I wouldn't want to um, because the, the trains are so good the public transport so good everything's joined up so well so you can get off a train and there'll be a bus there or get off a train and there'll be a boat there so it, it works so well um, that I've never had to I've been driven but I've never actually driven myself yeah that's right. It's uh, it really is a, a fantastic public transport network. Yeah, absolutely, and, and use as much of it as you can. Like use go on go on a boat trip. I mean, honestly, I could go on a boat trip, take a train trip. Uh, you know, try some of the food. Um, yeah, there's just a lot to do. A lot to do, and yeah, not enough time to do it all, unfortunately. Yeah. Well, I, I don't know how many times I've been. So many times, um, and there's still loads that I've still got to see and explore i've not definitely not seen very much of the kind of italian speaking part of southern switzerland um definitely not seen enough of that in fact and say not been to the top of europe but young fry young fry so there's a lots of things that i still haven't done um and i've lived there i've been there i don't i, I can't count them in terms of being um so yeah there's always something new to do somewhere somewhere new to explore 
That's right. Always another another trip waiting to happen. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> well, thanks very much for all those great tips, Tracy. It's been um, yeah really interesting chatting to you. And I'll share the links to both Tracy's um, travel blogs and her Facebook group, which is um, all about. Uh, travel planning for the UK. Um, so I'll put all those details in the show notes for this episode. And you can find them at holidays to switzerland.com forward slash episode 14. And once again, Tracy, thanks so much for all the great tips and hope to um, be in touch with you again soon. Oh, no, thanks. Thanks very much for inviting me. It's been lovely. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you so much for listening. For more great resources on planning a trip to Switzerland, make sure you visit holidaystoswitzerland.com where you'll find trip planning tips, destination guides, information on transport, including Swiss rail passes, and much more. You're also encouraged to join the Switzerland Travel Planning Group on Facebook where you can ask questions and chat to other past and future travellers to Switzerland. You'll find show notes from today's episode at holidaystoswitzerland.com forward slash podcast and be sure to subscribe to the Holidays to Switzerland travel podcast so you never miss an episode.